productivity and self-help gurus. We take all this advice from them, but do we ever ask ourselves, or them for that matter, what their mental and emotional states are like? Yes, they may be productive, but are they happy? Yes, they may have done a million and one things, but are they fulfilled? By hyper-focusing on a single external metric of success, we forget to consider everything else, resulting in the assumption that they're successful in all areas of life. But I think that this is actually rarely true. Not because it's impossible, but because of the fuel and methods that they use to be productive. The gurus themselves admit it. Ali Abdal, Matt Diavella, Nathaniel Drew, they've all claimed in at least one of their videos that they never feel like they're doing enough because they feel like there's always another goal to be chasing. This leads not only to dissatisfaction in their work lives, but also to inadequacies in other parts of their lives and to burnout. This is what toxic productivity is and what it leads to, 100% of the time. Yes, toxic productivity can often lead to results, but it'll always inevitably lead to burnout. Because burnout is doing a lot of work and putting a lot of energy into something, yet convincing yourself that the results don't reflect it because you could always do better. In this way, the output will never seem to match the input. But I think the trick here is to realize that this isn't an objective measure, which is clear because all of these gurus have objectively done great things. Even reaching millions of subscribers on YouTube is an outsized feat. Yet these gurus, at least when they succumb to burnout, all admit to feeling like they haven't accomplished enough at this point in their lives. Ultimately, I think their mistake is thinking that doing all this work will bring them the satisfaction they, they desire. But actually, we have to flip the formula. We first have to focus on getting the mental and emotional states right, and everything else will follow. To learn about why this is, check out my last video, and to learn about how to do this, keep watching. I recently listened to Atomic Habits, just five years late to the game, and I found it fascinating how much power there is in shifting your focus from goals to systems. But while this is what everyone tends to remember from this book, it seems most people overlook the importance of establishing the right sort of systems. In my opinion, systems that reinforce soft productivity. You should have systems that build you up, strengthen your sense of self-worth, and increase your level of trust in yourself and the universe. This will open you up to the depths and heights of energy and inspiration available to you right here and now. And it will allow for your intuition to be transmitted loud and clear so that the rest can come naturally and easily. The right sort of systems or daily habits are ones that sustain us, that feed our soul. Fill your cup first and the rest will follow. Doing things like meditating and journaling to reprogram negative self-limiting beliefs, affirming to yourself that you're capable and that you can trust in yourself and the universe, and doing physical activity to release any energy that's weighing you down are just a few things that you can do that will make space for soft productivity. But remember, systems aren't a means to an end. I believe their purpose isn't to get us closer to accomplishing a goal, painfully trying to reduce the gap between us and a finish line that's constantly moving farther away, but rather they're a way to keep your channel clear, which is blocked by fear, doubt, worry, and other negative thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. Talking about this reminds me of an ancient Sanskrit chant I recently learned, Om Mani Padme Hom. It's a heart-centered mantra that's said to encompass all Buddhist teachings, and it translates to the jewel is in the lotus. In other words, there's a jewel inside of you, inside of all of us. Our work isn't to achieve greatness, it's to find it within. If our external environment can only ever reflect our internal environment, then making our internal environment one of abundance, creativity, and flow is the only thing that'll ever lead us to our dreams. Play, exploration, and creativity are three more powerful sources of energy and inspiration, but we often take them for granted. We allow ourselves to indulge in them only if the circumstances allow for it. If it's the right sort of occasion and things align just right to allow us to not feel guilty. But I believe that, like with working out and discipline in general, 
Play, exploration, and creativity are things to be nurtured. If you don't dedicate a regular time for them in your schedule, if you don't prioritize them, if you only do them when you feel like it, then you're, you'll rarely do them at all and you definitely won't be able to cultivate them. This means that you'll be missing out on several different sources of inspiration and motivation, all of which have the power to align you with flow, abundance, and ease. If you nurture these skills, they'll nurture you back. Learn to trust your desires. We often feel guilty for giving in to our desires, but I believe after hearing time and again from different intuitive women entrepreneurs that our desires are placed in us to guide us down the right path. Our desires are powerful, certainly a lot more powerful than the sense of obligation we generally let ourselves be led by. This is because, as with other things I've talked about, desire is based in love and obligation is based in fear. Desire is, I get to, I want to, I would love to, while obligation is, I have to or I need to because if I don't, then... Desire is motivating while obligation is wearisome. You can test this out yourself. If you feel into the energy of the first three phrases, then you'll get a sense of just how much power desire holds. Meanwhile, fear always creates resistance and friction. And like I said in my last video, resistance and friction require energy to overcome. To put it simply, fear is an energy drain. Being led by it requires work, while love and desire are energy fountains. They give you energy. With love and desire, you're simply pulled to do things. It's an attraction, a magnet that would require work and energy not to abide. These are all things that you can heed to create an abundant internal environment, which will then be reflected as an abundant external environment. But be careful. Don't try to improve your internal state just so that you may experience external abundance because that would ultimately just be prioritizing the external over the internal again. Instead, improve the internal simply for the sake of improving the internal, to feel aligned, authentic, and in balance, to feel joy, trust, and love. Because when you fill your life with these things, then you leave no room for fear, and fear is the only thing getting in anyone's way. If you like this video, then hit that like button, and if you really liked it, then subscribe so you can catch all my videos as soon as I drop them. Before you leave though, leave a comment down below letting me know what you do to stay productive. I'd love for this to be a space where we could all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you guys have to say. But as for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.